Welcome to The Artist Politic. Today we're with Sax G at the Sunset Tavern in Ballard. He's a producer, MC, and visual artist. We discuss whether politics is pointless, his connection to the South, and if LeBron is the greatest of all time. Sax G, welcome to the show. Thank you, I appreciate it. So, let's give a little overview, I guess, of who you are and what what you've done. Um, you're a hip hop artist, you're a producer, hmm. beat maker, um, hmm. you are a sometimes M- MC. I don't know how you, <laughs> how do you, how hmm. you describe yourself with that list of things. Hmm. I always get nervous when I have to like describe myself of because course. it's like then there's like it's followed by this expectation or something like that. Like you're committing to something. Yeah, it's like oh I'm yeah. an MC, so like rap well or something like that, or like I yeah. make beats, like make a tight beat or something. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, I think that I'm just a creative person. Yeah. And I just try to find a way to materialize it in a way that makes me happy. And, you know, before I started making music, I played basketball Mm. and I get the exact same um, level of satisfaction that I did when I would make a no look pass. Yeah. That I, you know, I get that same feeling when I make a beat, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I don't I try not to look at it as like a discipline or something like that. I just look at it as a feeling that needs to get out. Hmm. So just I'm just a creative person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in, in what other ways do you express that creativity besides well, the hip hop? <clears throat> used to be basketball. Yeah. And when when those when I woke up from those hoop dreams, mm-hmm. it was how far did you get in that college? Yeah. So I, I I got like all my D1 offers and stuff like that. Went on my visits, um, just injuries mm-hmm. and. You know, you just realize that just because you're the best in your neighborhood, you know, there's a thousand other versions of you everywhere. Else, yeah, you know, no and, kidding. And it doesn't help when you have a bum knee or something, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, <clears throat> came back and I'm not even gonna front. I saw, I was out of, I was homeless and uh, mm. I was at a barber shop, major league barber shop. And I remember, so I would just wake up every morning. I had a car. <clears throat> I'd wake up every morning and drive to uh, this thing called Labor Ready. Mm-hmm. And you like, you try to be the first person there. You're there with a whole bunch of like drug addicts and ex-convicts, th- things like that. And I'm, I'm not gonna say it only that, but you know, people who we're, we're all struggling, obviously. So <clears throat> you, you try to get there early to get these jobs that yeah. are horrible. They're jobs that no one wants to do. Yeah. <laughs> they pay you like five dollars an hour, you know, it's it's horrible. Yeah. yeah. And so I would wake up early, do that, and then I I try to like I always I didn't never look homeless, you know. I didn't look mm-hmm. like it. I always was presentable. So I go to the barber shop with my little money and stay clean. Mm. And uh we'll go to like the gym and use their shower. Yeah. Um I was at the barber shop and I overheard people talking about just some local rappers it's like arguing. Like, yo, I'm about to go see my man, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I was just like, who? Like, what's his name? They're playing his music. I'm like, y'all gonna go see him? Like, huh. you're about to pay to go hear this? And I wasn't trying to hate. I was just like, damn, I could, I could do that. Yeah. Huh. And I guess that was a spark. I just started rhyming there. Just. I happened to buy the Dilla Donuts album that same year. Mm. Uh, no, I'm, not, I'm lying. Uh, actually, no, yeah, I did buy it that same year, even though that wasn't the year it came out. Yeah, This had to be 08. I bought that and it's this ill combination of being hungry, mm-hmm. homeless, and wanting to change that it just yeah. sparked art. Yeah. I just started rhyming then. Man, that's how I started. Wow. Uh-huh. So you were, you were, <clears throat> literally sitting, living in your car, my car, writing your first rhymes. First rhymes. 
in my, you know, when you're homeless, you don't have nothing but time. <laughs> I guess so. I was, so I yeah. just was in there figuring it out. Huh. And my first rhyme ever was just like a combination of a whole bunch of pieces of rhymes. I, I didn't know how to count bars. It was just whatever. So I was rhyming and DJ Topspin came in there. I don't know if you know who that is. Mm -hmm. He's a, man, he's like the best DJ ever to me. One of them. And he hears me in there rhyming and at the barbershop and next thing you know, he's, you know, introducing me to vitamin D and everybody. Yeah. So I guess immediately started like that. It was, it was a blessing and a curse because the rhyme was so great that now everyone just thought I was a rapper and I, that was the only rhyme I had. Okay, yeah. Because I've heard a little bit of that story, kind of mm -hmm. like the beginnings and that, that mm -hmm. barbershop story and kind of, mm -hmm. we'll get into where it goes from there. For sure. Because I know there's more, more of a story, but mm -hmm. um, that was always my question that I ne I've never asked you. It was like, was that literally like the one rhyme you had in your back pocket? One. It was like, oh, okay. And so now they're like, yeah, we're going to put you on a song with chocolate. And I'm like, oh my God, yo, I'm not ready. You You're know. like, it took me three months yeah, to write this. Yeah, like, yo, come on. <laughs> then they, yeah. they want me to do it there too. It's like, okay, just go in the room and you know, we'll put a beat on for you. It's like, oh my gosh. So so you did it? Did you go to sessions like that? I did go to sessions kind of High like pressure? That. High pressure and... And what happened? I guess that was like my, like, it's a choice now. All right, do you really want to pursue this or were you just trying something? Mm -hmm. and I really pursued it. I want to go backwards just a little bit. Okay. Back to the barbershop rhyme mm -hmm. that kind of got this whole thing started mm -hmm. for you. Um, what was it about? What were you talking about? Oh man, I didn't know what to, where to come from with it. I was just trying to get a, I just wanted to sound cool. Mm. And that wasn't really good. Um, but, um, in relation to everyone around me, it sounded phenomenal because hmm. I actually cared. Hmm. <laughs> I, I actually, you know, not saying that they didn't, but you just got a lot of just people just talking, talk. Yeah. So my first rhyme was just like, I don't even remember what it was, but it was just like, I'm better than you raps. Uh -huh. It's like, I'm better than you raps. And I guess my approach was like, all right, everybody does that. So how am I going to make it interesting. Mm. I guess that whatever I came up with was, it worked. Yeah. It wasn't until 09, 2010 after Obama, I went, I went down to Atlanta to be with my, my, my big sister and my grandmother, my, my little sisters, my, I have a younger brother in Atlanta too. I went down there, my family owns the plantation that our, my antecedents were on. And so I spent time with my grandmother there I've, I've never been one to party or, or anything like that. So I, I literally just took all my books that I had with me. I had um, W.E.B. Du Bois, um, The Souls of Black Folks. I had Alex Haley Queen. I had the Michael Eric Dyson Reader, mm. Democracy Matters, Cornel West. I had, I had all these books with mm -hmm. me. Some that I took from my mother. That's a heavy book bag. Oh, yeah, I took all of them. I was just like, I wasn't planning on coming back to Seattle. I told you I was homeless before, you know, mm -hmm. so I was like, why? And I'm not even sure why I went down that path mm -hmm. with the books. It's just like, that's what I was, that's just what I picked up. I go down south with my grandmother and I'm looking in trees and I can see petrified rope from lynchings. And uh, the church is still there. It's in Casita, Georgia. Um, the church is still there from back then, and it's the church that we still go to. Mm -hmm. And as you approach the entrance of the church, I can see my antecedents, headstones. Um, it's like, damn, like, yo, I look up there, it's like you can see petrified rope, and it's just things like that. And so I'm reading these books, <laughs> you know, absorbing this information, and at the same time having like talk with my grandmother who is a last generation slave. Mm. I say all that to say, you asked me what I was rapping about with my first rap. <laughs> it's weird to even say that, my first rap, <laughs> my first song. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> when I come back, uh-huh. I have perspective. Mm. And that's when I feel like I really like earned my name out here. So what perspective did you gain from that, that trip to the family plantation? Mm. It reconfirmed things that I already knew, but I remember returning back to Seattle and a cop punched a young black girl in the face near Franklin. And I just remember us being up here watching. And I remember thinking that would never happen in Atlanta. That cop would have got his whole ass lit up. Hmm. And that's no disrespect to the city of Seattle. But it did kind of make me feel like, like my sense of self was different. Like my, I, the way that I identified myself was different. I, would, I wouldn't allow, again, I, I'm not Rambo. I'm not gonna, you know, who knows what I would have done, but I know I'm not gonna stand there and record it. Right. The girl. The yeah. Girl yeah. Place, yeah. I'm, I know yeah. I'm not gonna, I'm hearing laughter in the video. I'm hearing, mm-hmm. again, those are kids probably. I don't know, but yeah. I just know that would not have, my sisters would not have let that, my baby brother would not have let that happen to nobody else down there. Mm-hmm. And I don't want this to sound like an indictment on the city. I don't want it to sound like that because I know it comes across that way. I just think that we have a more reserved approach to life out here. Yeah. And that doesn't, you know, I I learned when I came back that I'm not really like that. I may be like that on the outside, but internally that does not work for me. Hmm. And so I learned that about myself and that became present in my art. Yeah. You know, and I, I ended up linking with like minds out here, Y King and um, my man Amir, and people like that who uh, share share similar. Makoyo, mm-hmm. um, Stas, mm-hmm. um, um, Kat and Stas, and who share similar passions. Um, similar love for self. Again, I'm not I'm not excluding anyone and saying that these, uh, you know anybody else doesn't, but they made it easy for me to, you know, oh, Larry Mizell. Mm-hmm. It was easy for me to like, oh, he, okay, I, he's probably a tribe that I'm a part of. Mm. Um, and I remember that moment specifically kind of spoke to me. I, I just remember hearing people just talk about it and I was just like, damn, man, they just went to the club after, you know, mm-hmm. you know it's just like yeah. it was just nothing. And that really bothered me and, and, and hurt me. Um, but I think that I might have been, maybe I would have been laughing too. I don't, I don't think so, but maybe I would have just gone on with my day too had I never made that trip. Do you think that um, in these crazy times that we're living in, mm-hmm. do you think that some of the things you're working on now or some of the future things will start to become more political? Do you, do you feel a need to get that out through your music? <laughs> when I first came back from Georgia, that was like, all my raps were like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember I did a song, I did like three songs with Eric G and like, he sent them back to me. They're like, pro black sax one, pro black sax. <laughs> I was like, damn, <laughs> that's what we call it. Uh, that's <laughs> but yeah. um, I, I hope that I'm not coming off as surface when I'm answering these questions because I'm, I'm not trying to, but politics in America, let's stay there. To me, it's two sides of the same coin. To me, I don't care, let me not say that. To me, my aunt could get elected tomorrow as the president. I still have to go to work today and when I open up the the car, the, 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 the door to the store, People are still gonna walk past and wonder, like, is he really, like, you know, is he really a man? Like, why did who who is this guy getting in the right? Yeah. Um, it doesn't matter who's in office, <laughs> you know. Um, 
so to be political, maybe like in like a surface way, would be pointless to me. Mm -hmm. Like to campaign in a certain way yeah. would be, I don't want to say pointless. I, I'm not educated enough in that to, to really know, but I think I'd like for my art to connect, you know, and invite. And maybe at some point become like this living thing that like some type of project that is just like never ending that would like require um, the input from someone else in order for the piece to be done. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Are you ready for the lightning round? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, a couple, couple quick fire questions. Okay. See, see what you think. Who is the best producer MC hybrid artist? <sighs> don't do this. <laughs> Prince. Ooh. I wasn't expecting that one. Prince. True or false? LeBron is the GOAT. False. Do you have a, <laughs> a follow-up statement you'd like to make about that? Okay. LeBron is like, if you're on a schoolyard, pick LeBron. Like Michael Jordan, Kobe, LeBron. Just pick LeBron. Like, you're going to win that game. Mm -hmm. um, so th that's that. Greatest skilled player to me is Kobe Bryant. Mm. Just that technical, okay? yeah. greatest skill. He is a technician. It's like left hand, right hand. Yeah. But that, I don't know, je ne sais quoi, like it factor, mm -hmm. Michael Jordan is like, I feel like I'm going to win because you're on my team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, and to me, those intangibles that desire that he had. I don't necessarily get that from LeBron. No disrespect, but it's mm -hmm. like, sometimes I feel like he doesn't want to shoot it because he doesn't want to miss. Hmm. Like he doesn't even want to attack the hoop because I don't want to get fouled because I know I don't shoot free throws well. Hmm. But playing pickup is like, he's the best player. <laughs> like Get LeBron, he's yeah. gonna score all the points, he's gonna get all the rebounds, blah, blah, blah. So hmm. that's why I say nah, you know. Yeah. Kobe, I don't get that all the way. I don't get that either. You know, Kobe is just like, he's so focused. He doesn't see anything else, which does help. It helps, you know, but with Michael Jordan, I feel like we're going to win. Yeah. He's going to say something to make Dennis Rodman do what he's supposed to do. Right. Yeah. I, <laughs> I feel like people, this part doesn't come up in that debate very often, but the... Um, the leadership style, the leadership skills. Mm -hmm. Of course, LeBron is, you know, mm -hmm. all time great, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like he has the the leadership and the and like the team with him. It's it's almost like he's dragging the team mm. along with him. And mm. I like Jordan that. was like forging the path for the mm. team. Oh, I like that. Yeah, no, I like that a lot. I feel like, I mean, we hear stories about Mike, like, was an asshole. Yeah. But it's like, not if you're doing what you're supposed to do. <laughs> right. Like, I'm, you know, I feel like he'll punch you because you, cause you missed the layup. You're not supposed to miss a layup. Right. I feel punch like, you in the face. yeah, right. I feel like <laughs> LeBron is going to shake his head. Like, yeah. I used to hate playing with people who would, like, get fouled and, like, kind of perform for the audience. So it's like they get fouled and they kind of like, mm -hmm. look, like shake their head and look at the crowd. It's like, man, you're, you're doing way too much. And I feel like LeBron does that. I mean, he has, he, maybe he has to do that, you know, but nah, greatness doesn't care about that to me. Mm -hmm. Win your championships. Win your, and he is great. He's 1A, 1B, you know, 1B, 1B, yeah, right. you know, but. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm sure we could talk about that <laughs> word, for, word, for word. longer. Word. Who's the most underrated uh, musician, artist in Seattle? Underrated musician, artist in Seattle? Vitamin D. 
mm. to me. Vita. Vitamin D is super underrated. I mean, I'm sure that that sounds ridiculous because everybody loves Vita. But I don't even like calling him Vita. I've met him a few times. I think I've earned, I could call him Vita. Like, he's big, he's big bro. Yeah. Um, but to me, he's, you know, he's like a Dilla before anyone knew about Dilla. Hmm. Uh, what's the least favorite song you ever released? Ooh. Man. <laughs> Sax's heartbeat. Part um, one. Or, yeah, the isn't there two one. parts? Yeah, of that? the first yeah. one. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love that beat. I love it, but I didn't want to release it. Like hmm. something about it made me not want to put it out. I think it was just during the time I was breaking up with my son's mother at the time. Mm -hmm. We were in Georgia. Like I had just had that incident with Ninth Wonder. Mm -hmm. My other grandmother was passing away. He was just like. And like, that was the first beat <laughs> like I made. So huh. I didn't really want to even, it was more like a, it was like, I was so attached to that song that it felt like it needed to be on the album. Hmm. I didn't really want to put it out, hmm. it, but I ended up doing it. A lot of people like it. It's funny cause I think I was here. Uh, was I here? Or maybe uh, Lucid Lounge. Mm. Uh, I was performing there with uh, Rashad, Raised by Wolves, mm. and <laughs> that's, uh, that song came on in intermission, and like a couple came up to me and was like, yo, I, I'm not trying to be weird, man, but yo, me and my wife, we, we're newlyweds, man, and we, man, like, we make love to that song. I'm <laughs> like, fam, yo. <laughs> well, I get that a lot like with that song. I guess yeah. it's like a, a sensual sounding song or something. Well, there you go. <laughs> If that's, if that's your least favorite song and you're getting that response, well, right. you're, yeah, you're on the right side of That feels good. Doing yeah. it. It's comforting. <laughs> <sighs> Sax G, thanks for coming through. Thank you for having me, yeah. bro. I appreciate it. Really nice talking word, to you. Word. Catching up a little.